Hello everybody, how are you doing? I am back from the Mid-Ohio Valley Pen Turners Gathering and let me tell you, what a show. It was absolutely incredible. For those of you that couldn't make it, uh, please keep an eye on the Facebook page and consider coming next year. We had people from all over the United States that came to the show. The meet and greet with everybody was fantastic. There's just so many great people there. The vendors were insane. The blank makers had the coolest stuff. I have got my table saw loaded up with tons of stuff that I purchased at the show. And I'm going to go through and show you uh, all of these items in just a couple of minutes and tell you a little bit about them. Uh, I want to let you know that there will be two videos coming out uh, shortly after this. I'm still editing them. One of them is uh, the vendors. It's, it's kind of a walkthrough like I did at the Augusta show of all of the vendors. And the second one, I split it up. The second one is a walkthrough of the blank manufacturers because the way they had the show set up, it was really kind of cool. They had a room that had the, the vendors and then a room that had the blank manufacturers and then a room that uh, had the demonstrations. So that way the demonstrations, because when you're shopping, uh, it kind of gets kind of loud in the sales area. Uh, but they had a nice wall up so that it didn't affect the demonstrators. And if you were in a demo, uh, you could really hear everything that they were saying and really enjoy the demo. So it was a really nice setup. Um, so without any further ado, let me flip this camera around and let's talk about some of the things that I got at the show. And I'm super excited about this, guys. I don't have a wide enough angle on my on my camera to show you the entire table at once. So we'll kind of break it down. I'll start over here on the right and bring some things over. Um, my favorite place to buy pin kits is the classic nib and I picked up one of these gunmetal bolt action pin kits and there's a blank for that. I also picked up uh, four of the elegant monarchs. These are the gunmetal and chrome. That's one of my favorite kits, absolute favorite kits to do. Um, I picked up an elegant beauty. Uh, now this, this is really cool. Notice the colors and a little bit later on you'll see a kit that I'm going to match this up with and I think it's going to be really cool. The first Elegant Monarchs that I showed you, I, I've got two more here. Actually, I take that back. I've got three more here. Um, the first one that I showed you, uh, the first four, were the cross kits. They have a little cross on the, um, the um, nib. These two are the circle kits, and this is another cross kit, but this one's a titanium and platinum. So that's for a very special kit. And while I was there, I also picked up some turn between center bushings. I got the seven millimeter, and then of course I got the Sierra Monarch uh, because the, I use the heck out of these. And the thing I really like about the classic nibs um, turn between center bushings is they have the 60 degree live center on the end, but you'll notice they also have a hole through them. So basically you can turn between centers, and then if you wanna polish and you wanna use your mandrel to hold them, you can slide these right on the mandrel so they serve double duty. And I really like that about their, uh, their um, turn between center bushings. I'm going to hop down here to the bottom. I got these two blanks, or actually these three blanks, from Drop Anchor uh, Creations. And this one's really cool. Take a look at that. This is a Woodstock blank, and it's got a little piece of material in there. And I didn't read the whole thing. I believe it's from the stage. Uh, you'll learn, we'll learn more about that and talk more about that whenever I actually do the video on it. And that is what I got this kit for from the Classic Nib. And I think that's gonna make a really, it's kind of psychedelic colors. I think that's gonna make a really cool looking pin. I also picked up these Ohio State blanks. Now, what these are for, some of you heard me talk in one of my vlog videos over on the other channel that my daughter has been attending Ohio State games with her best friend's family. And um, I wanted to get those, those blanks to give them to uh, her parents as a Christmas gift. Moving along, Don Peters. Now this is a blank. Um, Don made this in his demo and at the end of the demo, he tossed it to me and asked me to turn it. Don's a really good friend of mine and uh, he did a fantastic demo on Celtic Knot blanks. And I'll be building a jig before long and showing the Celtic Knot plus a couple of variations that Don and I discussed. Don also was kind enough to send me this blank, and I know you can't see it real well. Let me see if I can peel the tape back a little bit. This is an Ohio State blank that he made, and um, this one will probably get given to uh, my daughter's uh, best friend so that she has an Ohio State blank too. I, I go ahead and put the tape on these, uh, and I'll peel it off where I can, but I do this because I want to remember who gave me the blank because there's a lot of stuff to turn here, and it may take a while uh, to turn. Now this is a blank I got from my buddy Mike DeLalter. This is a Second Amendment blank. 
And that's what the bolt action kit is for that I got from Niels and Debbie. I've got a good friend in Dallas who is looking for one of these for his brother, and he has been so helpful to me. I'm going to turn this and send it to him as a gift uh, for his brother. Take a look at this. You might have seen these. This is from Creative Woodworks. These have been showing up all over Facebook. They are giraffe blanks. They're totally awesome. They've got them in multiple colors. I absolutely love the pattern. And uh, this is one that they gave to me to turn. And I'll be turning that in a video. And I can't wait to see how it turns out. You've heard me talk about Benny Ray Watkins and Julie. These are some blanks I got from them. And you really, this one's tough to see. Let me, let me see if I can open these up and show it to you. I got some wooden blanks because I thought they looked really cool, the purple and the pink one. But look at this one. It's translucent. You see how that looks? I hope, yeah, there you go. See that? I'm thinking that that is going to make a killer kitless pin. So I got two of the blue translucents. I tried to pick out two that looked really close to one another so that uh, when I turned them, you know, I'd be able to have like a body and a cap and uh, really get a cool looking pin. Eric Richardson was at the show. And Eric and I got a chance to talk a little bit, shake hands, and just kind of hang out. And this is a blank that he made, and he brought this to the show and gave it to me to turn. So we'll be turning that in a video. Michael Harden. Now, Michael runs um, a company called Stadium Pin Blanks. And this is these are just some... He had a bunch of uh, acrylics at the show. Um, I don't know if he makes those or not. I have to be honest. I don't know the answer to that. I, I believe he does. But I got this blank from him. This is from the USS United States, and inside of this blank, there is a piece of, um, of the ship, and I, I believe it's a piece of wood from the ship, and it comes with a certificate of authenticity, and we're going to have a little bit of fun turning that one. That's going to be a beautiful blank. One of the subscribers to my channel, a gentleman by the name of Daryl Dice, he and I have become good friends, and Daryl noticed my bottle cap blanks, so he's been collecting bottle caps for me, and he brought me a, a batch of bottle caps to cast. Now, I haven't done any casting in a while, but I'm hoping once I get you know, back in the shop a little bit more, I want to get back into it because there's some really amazing looking caps there, and I also have some caps that some other folks have sent me. Take a look at these. Now... These come from Diamond Cast. Isn't that crazy? Look at those. These are jet black, and I bought these because I want to do sections out of them. I think black sections with uh, colored pins when I do my kitless pins is pretty awesome. I really wish you could see this blank. This blank is called Black Cherry, and it is almost exactly the color of my car. So naturally, I fell in love with it, and I'll be making a kitless pin out of this uh, that I will be keeping. Brandon Steele, a good buddy of mine. Now, Brandon and I took the kitless pin class with Jim Hines uh, at the first show. This was the third annual show. And Brandon, he had just started turning, and he decided that he wanted to be a kitless pin uh, maker. And he took the class, and he went crazy, and he has been making kitless pins. And this is one of his pins that he made for me and gave to me as a gift at the show. But he's been making kitless pins like crazy, and his pins are gorgeous. He was at the show, and he was doing classes. You could take a kitless pin class, and Brandon was teaching them. I got a blank here from Travis Brewer, and take a look at this. This is really cool. Now, this is deer antler on both ends, and it's wrapped with fly fishing line, and there's a fishing hook inside of the blank. So this would be ideal for any sportsman or fisherman. I just think it's a cool blank, and I can't wait to turn it. This pin was a gift, um, I, and I'm not going to give a last name, but Lexi made this pin for me. And Lexi and I, she watched my videos, and she came to the first show uh, two years ago, and we met. And uh, I had sent her some blanks and different things, and her mom, uh, I've stayed in touch with her and her mom, and they're wonderful people. And Lexi has been turning, and this is one of the pins that she made, and she presented me with this pin. So I'm really proud of this pin, and I'm going to keep this in my collection. So thank you, Lexi, if you happen to be watching my video. I think you guys might have heard me talk about Cocoon Blanks. These guys, I believe they're out of Arizona. They make some really awesome segmented blanks. And they were actually at the show giving one-on-one -on -one classes. I did not take one of their classes. I'm kind of sorry that I didn't, but um, maybe next year we'll take one because they do some beautiful work. And I really love this blank, and I'm looking forward to turning it. This is Sarah Dodinsky. Now, you guys have probably heard me talk occasionally about Robert Dodinsky. Robert and I are friends. Sarah's his wife. And Ursa Quirks is her, is her what she sells under her brand. 
and she's making polymer clay blanks. And look at that, isn't that beautiful? I purchased one of her blanks and I plan to turn this. Uh, I've never turned polymer clay before, so this will be a new experience for me and hopefully you guys will enjoy that. This was given to me at the show by Jason Rose. And what this is, this is a, um, a fantastic feather blank by Under, Underhill Creations. And this is a gear shift pin kit and a Route 66 cast blank. And I'm looking forward to turning both these, especially this feather one. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. That's going to be a lot of fun to turn. The Crafty Cooper was there, and I talked about her blanks before. And her blanks are so beautiful that you almost are scared to turn them. You just want to kind of polish them up and look at them. But I bought this blank, and over on my other channel, I have several items that were sent to me to turn. Uh, and one of them was going to be a honey dipper. And I had asked the people on the channel to choose a blank and they chose one, but I think I'm gonna override their choice and I think I'm gonna make a honey dipper handle out of this blank because it just, it's just so beautiful. I think it's really gonna make a gorgeous blank. Divine Island Designs was there and I picked up a couple of blanks for them. I got some jet black blanks or solid black blanks and then I got this kind of pearl colored blank and I thought these would be really awesome for making nibs on kitless pins. So I wanted to get some of those. My good friend Ernie Brown brought these blanks to me. Check those out. They are spalted maple and they are absolutely gorgeous. Um, they're kind of light. I'm toying with the idea of sending these up to Mike DeLalter and having him stabilize them before I turn them. And I may even talk to him about dyeing them, give them a little color, because I think it would be insane to, to give them a little bit of color when you stabilize them. We'll talk about that a little bit, a little bit more as we move forward. Thomas Tate. Now, Thomas is a good friend of mine, and he has been sending me a lot of stuff lately, and I really appreciate it. But this is this is uh, some walnut. It's got a little bit of uh, sapwood in it. And this right here, this wood started out in a house in Charleston, South Carolina, and the house was taken down, and this was used in a beam to hold up the dungeon in Charleston, South Carolina. Now, I don't know what the dungeon is. Those of you from South Carolina will probably know, but it's 359 years old. It's very light. It may need to be stabilized. It's oak, so I'm not sure. We'll take a little closer look at it as we get uh, closer to uh, preparing to turn it. I had a little trouble a while back with my collet chuck getting stuck on the spindle of my lathe, and uh, T-Shadow had these. These are washers that are designed to go between your chuck and your headstock on your lathe, and they keep your spindle from getting stuck. Um, now, a good buddy of mine, and we spent a lot of time together at the show, and I'm going to spell his last name because I pronounced it wrong at the show, and he pronounced it for me correctly, but I, my mind is not what it used to be, and I don't remember the proper pronunciation, and I don't want to hack his name again, but it's Bob H-E-D-I-N, and uh, Bob and I, he bought these for me and presented me with them. We were talking about me having the issue and um, I was going to run over and get some of these. And <laughs> I didn't get anywhere fast. I spent a lot of time stopping and visiting and talking. So Bob went over there, bought them and brought them back and gave them to me. So Bob, thank you very much. One other thing about Bob, he has, I mentioned a while back that I'd like to get away from CA finishes. Bob has a finish that he brought to the show and he demonstrated for me. And it looks promising. I need to acquire a couple of things, and we're going to try that in the shop and see if I might have a good replacement for CA glue. Before I went to the show, I put it out there that if anyone couldn't make it and they wanted to donate some pins for troops, feel free and send them to me, and I would take them to the show. My good buddy Art Alonzo donated some pins, but also in the package he included one of the kits um, for the pin that he that he made, one of the pins that he made, and he included a couple of custom blanks that he made for me. So the pins were for the troops, and then he had a little gift for me in there. So thank you so much, Art. I, I look forward to turning that. Tim Geist was at the show, and you've heard me talk a lot about Tim. I have Tim's sanding jig, and I also have um, the blank cutting jig from Tim, and he manufactures a lot of products for uh, turners and what he did is at, at the show he gave me these are some bushings for like the wall street the sierra and these are some adapters that let you put any bushing onto um, these adapters and you can make any standard bushing a turn between center bushing then he also gave me six sets of his uh, sierra bushings so these are really cool and i think i called these yeah they were wall street so this is really cool and I've got plenty of sets because you know I do wear those down uh, as I turn with them so I should be able to turn a lot of pins over a long period of time. 
While at the show, I roomed with a good buddy of mine, Mark Tobacco, and he brought this to me. He had a spare, and this is the Mighty Mag. And what this is, on your metal lathe, you have a dial indicator, and you put your dial indicator in here, and then you can uh, magnetically stick it. I'm sorry, you put your dial indicator in here, and then you can magnetically stick it to uh, your lathe in different positions uh, to be able to use your dial indicator to you know, check run out uh, on the piece that you're turning or actually even on uh, something that might be in your lathe like uh, a dead center or something. A couple of swag items here. I got this cool pin from Cocoon Blanks. I thought it was really neat. I also wanted to show you guys this was the name tag that everyone who went to the show was presented. So we all got, uh, got a name tag. Here was the wristband that allowed us to enter and leave the show. And while I was there, I was presented with a diamond cast hat. I'm really happy about that. That's a cool cap. I'll wear that in the video when I turn their pins and make sure I represent for them. And uh, I won an Easy Wood Tools cap. So that was really cool. I got business cards from everybody that was there, and I got a stack of stickers here from a lot of the vendors that uh, I'm going to put up on my wall. And this one here is from my good buddy, Mark Tobacco, and he signed it for me. So this is a very special sticker, and I'm gonna put this in a very special place. I really hope that this video wasn't too long because you know there's a lot of stuff there, and I was really excited. I really wanted to share that with you guys. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna start laying all that stuff out. We're gonna lay it all out, uh, blanks and we're gonna make kits with them and I'm gonna have it all ready to go So next time I come out to the shop I can say okay these need to be cut and I can cut a bunch these need to be drilled and we'll sort of do a little prep work to get them ready and then all of that stuff you're going to see in videos and I need to go back and pull because back here on my maker cart, I have stuff from the Augusta show that I haven't got to. And I think I want to get it all pulled and all made it up and ready to go so that when I come to the shop, I can prep everything. And then once it's prepped, we should be able to make video after video showing you this stuff. And I will, um, you know, tell you who I got it from. So if you're interested, you can go check them out. Guys, I'm telling you, I cannot stress enough how how these shows will benefit you as a turner. Um, the neat thing is everybody's heard of Penn State and we've heard of Woodcraft and they're good places. There's nothing wrong with them, but they're in the business of buying stuff and reselling it for a profit. When you go to this show and you buy a blank or a tool from these people, these the people at this show are turners, just like you, just like me. And they make these blanks and when you're there, they'll tell you, well, this blank is this. And this is how I made it. And this is how you turn it. And this is how you finish it. And you can ask all these questions and get these really in-depth, detailed answers that will make you a better turner. So in the future, if you get a chance to attend one of these shows, please do not let it pass you by. Take the time and attend. Meet people. Mingle. Shake hands. Ask a lot of questions because guess what? They absolutely love to tell you anything and everything about this equipment and about these blanks. They just love it. It's their passion, just like it's yours. So with that, I'm going to sign off. I'd like to thank you for joining me today. I want you to know that you are always welcome in my shop. And keep your eyes out because there's going to be a lot of videos coming down the pipe real soon. Take care, everybody. Have a great evening, and I'll see you again real soon.